Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here this morning at Amazing Grace Lutheran Church. It is uh, uh, a couple of exciting things this morning that I have to share. First of all, um, it's Confirmation Sunday. Uh, this is a good Sunday to be here. We'll um, have a confirmation service, an affirmation of baptism service a little bit later in the service. One other announcement that I wanted to make right away is that uh, we have officially hired Barb Fortune as our interim worship music director. So that is that has become official now, uh, and she'll be she'll be in that role uh, as long as you're in interim and or um, the the pandemic is going on. It's a job description fit for for that particular time. Uh, so some exciting news. Uh, make sure you. Uh, welcome her if you get the chance uh, and pray for her a little bit. We will begin worship. We begin our worship this morning saying, Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble cast away our transgressions and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need and through his death and resurrection Christ has made us his own. Hear this truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Now led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. I invite you to join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourish us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ, Amen. It is Confirmation Sunday, and at this time, I am going to ask all three of the confirmands to come forward. Out of their cars, come on up. It is an important tradition, not just of this congregation, but of the whole church. Um, for confirmation students or for candidates for baptism to share a public statement of their faith. Yeah, and make sure you're socially distanced. Uh, it, it's an important part of confirmation. It's not just, as I as I shared with the confirmands, this is not just a hoop that we want them to jump through uh, or a picture opportunity or something like that. This is an important part um, because confirmation is saying yes to the God who said yes to you in baptism. And so this is each confirmand's opportunity to say yes to God in their own words. And so we'll hear those statements now along with their with their uh, scripture readings. We'll begin with Natalie De Palma. You can come on up to the microphone. Hi, I'm Natalie De Palma. So for our faith statements, Pastor Jim asked us four questions. Um, the first of which being to choose our favorite Bible verse. So. For mine, I chose Romans chapter 8, verse 18. I am convinced that any suffering we endure is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of glory 
that is about to be unveiled within us. So this is my favorite verse because of its versatility in life, not just faith. It reminds me to be optimistic about my future and that the best views come after the hardest climbs. To me, it also highlights the idea that in hard times, better things are always going to arrive. One just has to trust in themselves and in the world and work for their happiness. The second question that he asked is for us to explain a few things that we believe to be true about God. So while many things may be true about God, I believe that the most valuable traits lie in his actions to be used as a reflection for how we should treat others. So first off, I believe that God forgives everybody for their wrongdoings, or at least the ones that they feel guilty about. And I think that his forgiveness is really important in our daily lives because it allows us to move past mistakes that we've made and grow as people because it's hard when you're dwelling on things that you feel bad about to really learn from them and become better. So yeah, his forgiveness is really important. Um, the next thing I believe to be true is that he disciplines us through hardship. And that's important because oftentimes it's hard to find motivation within yourself to really grow and learn and change. And through those tough times, it makes us grateful for what we do have in those good times. And it helps us to just really grow and become the best versions of ourselves through Christ. The third question that he asked was to explain which people and things have influenced your faith the most. So I think a lot of things have influenced my faith. Um, first off, my parents. My mom has really helped by explaining her faith journey to me and giving me reasons to believe. She's been a great listener for all of my questions. And as for my dad, I share really similar beliefs as he does, which makes him really easy to talk to. And he's helped me feel comfortable questioning things about God rather than just going along with whatever I hear from other people. Um, another big factor in my faith has been um, politics and the news in general. Um, it's given me insight on how people can use religion as a hateful weapon rather than um, what it was meant to be for. Um, a lot of self-righteousness comes with it and it's kind of negatively impacted my views, but I know deep down that religion is all about um, believing and having faith in yourself and in God and Christianity is based in love. So I just have to keep that in mind. Um, then my history class has taught me about other faiths for the first time and I learned more about just how different religions were created and how they spread, which has helped me think about what I would define my own faith as. Um, the final question that he asked is if we do have a question for God and I do not. Um, I believe that we know and have access to everything that we do need to know about the world and the rest should be left for um, us to decide on because our minds and experiences really shape who we are and I think that's really special and unique. So yeah. Alright, uh, hi, I'm Jacob. Uh, the verse that has the most meaning to me is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so or that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life because it shows how much God loves me. Uh, that God would sacrifice his only son for me is incredible and makes me feel special. His sacrifice drives me to be a better person. Uh, second question. Uh, Pastor Jim asked what five things I believe to be true about God. I believe that God sent Jesus to die for our sins. That God is always with me. That God can do anything. That God loves me no matter what. And forgives me when I mess up. Forgiveness is important in my life because me and my brother tend to get into arguments often. Uh, three... Some people who influence my faith are my family because they have taken me to church since I was a baby. It was important for me to go to church because it brought me closer to God's word. It is very important to know God loves me. Knowing that God loves me helps me get through tough times and I know I can turn to God when I feel alone. Some other people who influence my faith are my grandparents who sent me to Bible camp. Uh, one question I have for God is why didn't he just create us with not to be able to have sin. Uh, one theory I have why he did this is so that we could have we could have a chance to choose God over sin of our own free will. Uh, I want to thank my family, my confirmation mentor Jared, uh, and the people of Amazing Grace who have cared for me, looked out for me, and prayed for me over the years.
My name is Louis Morgan, and I have been a member of Amazing Grace since I was a baby, and I was baptized here. The verse I chose is Romans chapter 8, verses 38 through 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I find this Bible verse to be very meaningful because it reminds me that there is no greater force than God's everlasting love. And no matter what struggles and tests I face, God's love will always prevail. The most important things I believe to be true about God are, God is our creator and created all of us and our whole planet. God's love for all of his children is everlasting and undying. God is very forgiving. No matter who you are or what you have done, if you seek God, he will listen and forgive you. God's family is an everlasting force that binds everyone together, no matter what country you are from or what you do for a living, you are a child of God. There have been many people that have impacted my life or my faith through my life. I would say that the people who had the greatest impact on my faith are my parents and Pastor Chris. This is because they taught me so much as a child. When I would listen to Pastor Chris's sermons in church every week on the car ride home from church, my parents would help to break down the sermons into something I could apply to my own life. This has helped me build my faith a lot. One important question I have for God is, what is our purpose? I think this is a very important question because I believe that God did not put us here on earth to kill and steal from each other. I believe that we have a purpose that God put us here to accomplish. I've only been on this planet for 15 years and I have no idea what my purpose is, but I believe one day I will find it. Hello. Um, I present Natalie De Palma, Jacob Lynchide, and Louis Morgan, who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You've called them to yourself, enlighten them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. I ask you, confirmants, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Now, together, I address everyone in the congregation, along with the confirmands. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the life. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth, Now, for the congregation, 
people of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do. We do. We have God to help and guide us. We will now, uh, what I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask each individual family, in immediate family, to come and gather around, uh, gather around their child as we do the confirmation blessing. In between each of those, during the transitions, we'll sing a verse of the song that you see printed in your bulletin. We'll begin again with Natalie De Palma. So, if Natalie, if you could come right on up in front, and we'll ask the immediate family of Natalie De Palma to come forward, and we'll sing. As we do this, and as has been the tradition here, even even here in even here in uh, in our drive-in worship, uh, if if you'd like, I'm going to invite you all to raise your hand in blessing as as we pray this blessing over each of the individual confirmants. Parents, if you lay like to lay your hands on Natalie, let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Natalie the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. All right, family, if you'd like to lay your hands on Jacob. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Jacob the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. All right, let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Louis the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. In addition to the blessings that our confirmants have received, um, they will also be receiving a special letter um, directly from the Bishop of the St. Paul Area Synod written to them. Um, for in honor of their confirmation. Um, they will receive that in the week to come. Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice, rejoice with, with you in the life of baptism. baptism. Together, Together we, we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. In all the world, give your church unity. Inspire these confirmants and all the baptized with the mind of Christ where the church is powerful and where it struggles, shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious and loving God, we come before you with humility and gratitude for all you have given us as a people and as your church. We thank you for amazing grace and for the great cloud of witnesses who have enabled us to become members of this church body. We are grateful for faithful leaders, including pastors, teachers, and musicians who have nurtured our faith. 
Now we pause for just a minute to reflect on the things that we're grateful for. We pause now in the midst of these unprecedented times to ask your guidance. Help us as a congregation and as individuals to let go of the past that binds us. We do so knowing full well that unless we release what has been, we cannot open our hearts to become the church you want us to be. Now we'll take a moment to reflect on the things for which we need to let go. Lord, we know you have great plans for us. We pray for courage to face the future with confidence. Energize and revitalize us as your people. Grant us the gift of discernment that we may know and do your will. Be with us and strengthen us for the journey that lies ahead, trusting in your steadfast love to guide us. Now we ask you to take a moment to pray silently for the future of Amazing Grace Lutheran Church. Our lives are yours, O oh God. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. Defend the lives and welfare of children who are abused or neglected, hungry or exploited, bullied or lonely. Give protection and hope to those who are face to face with the fires in the West. We pray especially for those we now name out loud or in silence. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the same night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for everyone to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This is my blood which is shed for you and for everyone for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink from this cup, do so for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection and his promise of coming again until we see him face to face. Gathered together into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Friends, this banquet is open to all believers in Jesus Christ. The banquet has been prepared for you, so come.
before we blow away, let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place nourished and forgiven into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst. Guided by the example of Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A couple of announcements before uh, we're blessed on our way and, and sung on out of the parking lot. Uh, first of all, in celebration of uh, confirmation, there are cupcakes for everyone and they're going to be up in the circle. Um, so whether you have an offering or not, if you do have an offering, you can drop that off up in the circle as well. If you'd like a cupcake, just uh, do the same thing. Come around in the circle and there'll be cupcakes up there for you as well. I would also uh, like to invite the confirmands themselves to go and kind of plant themselves up in the circle somewhere there so everyone can see your shining smiley faces uh, of the new confirmands. You can greet each other, wave to each other, something like that. Um, one more important announcement. Uh, we're in a season of letting go and move forward. And an important invitation, an important way for you to participate in that is to respond to a couple of questions I've been asking people in the congregation. Uh, one is, what are the top three uh, high points of the history of Amazing Grace? And what are the three most important hard points in the history of the congregation? And there's a number of ways that you can respond to that. You can do that on the website. You can email me. You can give me a call and I'd be happy to set up a time to talk with you about that as well. Uh, but uh, an important way for you to participate in that, an important way that will inform both me and the leadership as we work to uh, move forward here. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. We want to give a special shout out of thanks to the Barnhart family that provided the, the cupcakes. Uh, yes, you all can eat the cupcakes. The good news for you is that I did not make them. So there is a special blessing for you in that. Friends, go in peace. Christ is with you. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.